Have you ever wondered why you make the decisions you do? What drives your choices? Welcome to the fascinating world of neuromarketing, a field that combines the insights of neuroscience with the strategies of marketing to understand what truly motivates our decisions. Let's dive into the science behind this. Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman proposed the idea that our brain operates using two systems. System 1, our subconscious mind, and System 2, our conscious mind. What's surprising is that although we like to believe we're rational beings, our decisions are far from purely rational. In fact, around 90% of our decisions come from our subconscious mind, the emotional part of our brain, also known as the limbic system. This system acts instinctively and fast, influencing our decisions without us even realizing it. On the other hand, System 2, our conscious mind, works at a slower pace. It's the part of our brain that we're aware of. It's analytical, methodical, and it's the part that tries to justify the decisions made by our subconscious mind. So when we choose a product or service, it's mainly our subconscious mind driving that choice. Then our conscious mind steps in to rationalize the decision, making us believe we've made a logical choice. This is where traditional marketing research often stumbles. Methods such as focus group discussions usually tap into the conscious responses of consumers. They ask questions and analyze answers that are processed and articulated by the conscious mind. But, as we've learned, the subconscious mind is the real decision maker. That's why these traditional methods can fail to capture the true motivations behind consumer behavior. So, if we want to understand what consumers really want, we need to delve deeper into their subconscious minds. In short, the science of decision-making is far more complex than we might think. It's not just about rational choices and logical thinking. Emotions, instincts, and subconscious thoughts play a significant role in shaping our decisions. Traditional marketing research often fails because it justifies conscious responses. But as we'll see, the subconscious mind plays a bigger role than we think. Consider the Pepsi challenge. Why did people prefer Pepsi in blind taste tests, yet choose Coke when they knew what they were drinking? This conundrum takes us back to the 70s, when the Pepsi challenge first emerged. Participants were asked to taste two unnamed cola drinks and then pick their favorite. In these blind tests, Pepsi often came out on top. Now you might think that's the end of the story, right? Pepsi tastes better, case closed. But here's where things get interesting. When the same people were asked to choose between a Coke and a Pepsi, knowing full well which was which, they would often select Coke. Despite their blind taste preferences, they were swayed by something far more powerful than their taste buds, their subconscious mind. Coca-Cola's branding and experience had so strongly embedded in the minds of consumers that it overpowered their actual taste preference. The red and white logo, the classic glass bottle, the association with joy and refreshment, all these elements were etched into the subconscious minds of consumers, influencing their choices in ways they didn't even recognize. Remember our subconscious mind, or System 1 as Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman calls it, is responsible for 90% of our decisions. It's the part of our brain that operates on feelings and instincts, and it often makes decisions before our conscious mind, or System 2, even has a chance to weigh in. And when it does, System 2 often just finds reasons to justify what System 1 has already decided. So in the case of the Pepsi challenge, consumers' subconscious minds were so influenced by the branding and experience associated with Coca-Cola that they actually ended up preferring Coke over Pepsi, despite their taste buds telling them otherwise. This demonstrates the power of subconscious decision-making. What we say and what we think can be entirely different. It's a lesson that marketers need to take to heart. It's not just about the product itself, but about the whole experience you create around it. In the end, it's often the subconscious mind that has the final say. Scene script, let's travel to Japan, where Nestle attempted to replace tea with Nescafe. In the land of the rising sun, where tea is deeply rooted in tradition and culture, Nestle decided to take on a bold endeavor. They sought to introduce Nescafe, their globally recognized coffee brand, to the Japanese market, aiming to supplant the nation's beloved beverage, tea. Before the launch, Nestle conducted focus group discussions and market research. The results were promising. Japanese consumers expressed considerable interest in Nescafe, fueling Nestle's optimism about the product's potential success. But when Nescafe was introduced, the reality was starkly different. 
the Japanese consumers, who had shown enthusiasm during the research phase, were reluctant to replace their cherished tea with Nescafe. The anticipated coffee revolution did not materialize, and tea remained the beverage of choice for the majority. This situation underlines a critical aspect of consumer behavior. It's not always about what consumers say they want or like, but rather about what they actually choose. Our conscious mind, the part that responds to surveys and focus groups, may express interest in a product. However, it's our subconscious mind, the real decision maker, that guides our actions. The subconscious mind is driven by emotions, experiences, and deeply ingrained cultural practices. In the case of Japan, the cultural significance and emotional connection to tea were far too strong to be easily replaced by Nescafe. This Nescafe case study in Japan is a classic example of the disconnect between what consumers say and what they do, highlighting the limitations of traditional market research methods. It underscores the importance of delving deeper into the subconscious mind, understanding the emotional triggers, and aligning with cultural nuances. It's a reminder for marketers worldwide that while conscious responses can provide useful insights, they are not always reflective of actual consumer behavior. In the end, it's the subconscious mind, with its complex web of emotions, experiences, and cultural attachments, that holds the key to understanding consumer decisions. Again, the subconscious mind proves to be the real decision maker. And who can forget the iPhone, a device loved by users worldwide? This sleek gadget, the brainchild of Apple, not only revolutionized the tech industry but also left an indelible mark on the human psyche. Let's take a step back to the year 2011. A groundbreaking report surfaced, revealing the powerful emotional connection between users and their iPhones. On conducting brain scans, the insula cortex, a region associated with love and compassion, lit up when users saw their iPhones. It's as though the iPhone was not just a device, but a cherished companion, a testament to the power of Apple's branding and marketing. This phenomenon can be traced back to how Apple positioned the iPhone, not as a mere communication tool, but as an extension of one's personality. Every detail, from the design to the user interface, was meticulously crafted to evoke a sense of exclusivity and sophistication. And it worked. The iPhone became synonymous with innovation and prestige, compelling consumers to form an emotional bond with a piece of technology. But what does this tell us about our decision-making process? Well, it's a classic example of how our subconscious mind, or System 1 as Nobel laureate Daniel Kahneman would put it, influences our choices. We may think we're buying an iPhone for its features or performance, but in reality, we're drawn to it because of the feelings it evokes. This emotional response is precisely what traditional marketing research often overlooks. Focus groups and surveys can tell us what people say they want, but they fall short in revealing what people actually desire. The iPhone's success underscores the importance of understanding the emotional underpinnings of consumer behavior. It's not just about what a product does, but how it makes us feel. So the next time you find yourself instinctively reaching for your iPhone, remember, it's not just a phone. It's a carefully engineered symbol of status and innovation designed to appeal to your emotions. Clearly, our decisions are not always as rational as we believe. So what does all this mean for marketing? Well, it's a revolution. Neuromarketing, the confluence of neuroscience and marketing, is poised to redefine traditional marketing strategies. It's all about understanding what consumers want, what drives them, what motivates their thoughts, behavior, and emotions. This is not a simple task. As we've seen, our decisions are often not as rational as we like to believe. They're deeply influenced by our subconscious minds, our emotional brains. Traditional marketing research, with its focus groups and surveys, can only scratch the surface of these complexities. It's like trying to understand the ocean by studying a single wave. But neuromarketing can dive much deeper. It can measure and analyze real-time brain activity, enabling marketers to understand the subconscious mind, the driving force behind 90% of our decisions. With this knowledge, marketers can create more effective campaigns, design better products, and provide superior customer experiences. Let's take a look at some real-world examples. Google, the tech giant, used neuromarketing to choose the shade of blue for its sponsored links. This may seem insignificant, but this subtle change, influenced by the science of how our brains perceive colors, increased Google's annual revenue by $200 million. 
Then we have Amazon, the world's largest online retailer. They use neuromarketing to optimize their website's loading speed. A mere tenth of a second faster response resulted in a better customer experience, leading to a $1.7 billion increase in annual revenue. These examples show the tremendous potential of neuromarketing, but they're just the tip of the iceberg. As technology continues to evolve, we'll be able to delve even deeper into the human mind, unlocking insights that will transform marketing as we know it. So where does this leave us? As we move forward, the understanding and application of neuromarketing will become increasingly important in creating better consumer experiences. It's not just about selling products or services anymore, it's about understanding human behavior and using that knowledge to create a world that's more in tune with our subconscious desires and needs. It's a brave new world of marketing and we're just getting started.